Hello and welcome to LearnDigitalDesign.com. This will be a continuation of a series we're doing on learning to create an avatar image. If you haven't seen the previous tutorials, you need to uh, back up and go view those first. Uh, you can find them on our website at www.LearnDigitalDesign.com. Now uh, we here we're gonna clean up this a little bit and delete the ones that we've already done. Now these are really bold and they stand out, so we're gonna have to of course use some gradient slash uh, blurs to make them look right. We're gonna use sometimes you're gonna find that a radial gradient even in the position where it's not really calling for a radial uh, or like a circle you know sometimes that'll work even better than just the linear gradient in this case though we're going to continue to use the linear gradients but you're going to see some spots later on when we're going to use radial gradients on something that looks very linear and you just basically play with these things until they look right. Always remember, if it looks too bold, go to gradient and then go to blur. And without fail, you'll get a softer uh, object that will blend more into, especially a face, which is what we're dealing with here. There would, of course, be many applications where you would definitely not use any blurs. Um, if you're drawing some type of architecture or something, you don't want to blur because you want hard edges on all of your forms. But on a face, blurs are absolutely necessary. If we didn't have blurs, we would have to export into another program where we could soften the edges of some of these images, or some of these objects, as they're called in vector graphics. Now, as you can see on these lips, there's a lot more that we're going to have to do to them. There are a lot of surrounding objects like shines. There's a shine right underneath the nose and on the chin that we're going to have to add. And we'll add that later though. But Let's focus on the eyes a little bit. And you can see that around the outside of the eyes, probably where like the socket is for your eye hole in your skull um, there's going to be kind of a indention there where it's going to appear a little bit darker and if you just draw eyes without this darker area around them they're not going to look right just as they don't look right in our in our uh, on our canvas over here so on the model we're going to trace around these areas, these darker areas. And uh, kind of looking back at our model for or our canvas here for a little bit of reference. I don't like this uh, at all at the bottom of the nose and it's bothering me so I've got to adjust it a little. Sometimes if something's bothering you, it's okay to stop everything you're doing and adjust it a little bit. Because uh, you need to be able to focus on what you're doing and not be bothered by some little details. So go f just fix what you need to, when you need to. This is an obvious area right here that we need to uh, make an object out of. And of course we have the shine right underneath the eye where her bottom eyelid is. Now we're going to need to repeat the same thing on the other eye. And the other eye is a little different in the way the light is reflecting off of the bottom eyelid. And this, you know, for it should be a lesson to those of you who uh, maybe aren't used to 
drawing faces already, like with a pencil or something. Faces are not symmetrical. In a matter of fact, the uh, I saw an image once where someone took a face that was of course not symmetrical because faces aren't symmetrical and they made it symmetrical by copying one side and pasting it on the other side flipped and if you ever do this you can do it with a computer you could do it with Inkscape you can see that it doesn't look right something looks wrong when the face is completely symmetrical so that's one of those things about a face that I was telling you before that your eye has a natural instinct to be able to pick up that's why faces are the hardest thing to draw but with Inkscape you no longer have to worry about that because you can vectorize anyone and if you can vectorize anyone you can vectorize anything because once again obviously faces are the hardest thing to do we have these kind of darker areas back behind the eyelashes here that I'm gonna use as well there's this dark area here Don't ever let somebody watch you do this to them. Uh, because if they're watching you do it, they're going to, especially if you know, a female is probably going to be offended by you picking out all of the uh, shadows on her face. And uh, so just kind of do this in private and then show them the end result. As you can see on this face, uh, we have a shadow that goes all the way around the outside. And that's okay to make that one object. And the way I'm going to do that is trace around it like so. And then once I get back up into the hairline, I'm going to shoot out outside of the head area. And what we're going to end up doing here is gonna, we're going to make an intersection. We're going to intersect this object with the head object so in order to do that what we need to do grab the head object and make a duplicate first otherwise that's going to disappear then grab the other object by holding a shift and then go to duplicate go to object and intersection and you need to start learning these hotkeys also because as we continue on with the tutorial series here I'm not going to continue to go to path and then intersect and path and difference you need to know that control shift 8 is intersect control minus key is difference so also control D is duplicate control C is copy and control V is paste and I'm sure most of you know that so hopefully uh, don't be offended by me uh, going over that but I'm sure that some of the viewers won't and uh, as you work with computers and if you get into digital design you're gonna really be able to improve your uh, work process and the speed that you can get things done by understanding these macros and yes a macro is kinda like a hotkey it is as a matter of fact it's exactly what it is alright now we're gonna grab that same object that we just put around the outside there and we're gonna color it in with a sample from the other side then we're gonna appropriately place it uh, you know below some of these other objects like the hair for example it needs to be below the hair with the page up or page down key 